Okay, I want to go over voltage drop testing and verifying that a circuit can carry amperage and maintain voltage during operation. Uh, this is a Buick LeSabre. I have the uh, scope set up, but you can just assume it's a multimeter. I just have it set up so you can see a visual representation of what's happening. Um, the way a multimeter works, or especially a voltmeter in this case, is really important to understand before we get into the actual testing. So what you have with a voltmeter is two leads. You have a positive probe and a negative probe, or a positive probe and a common probe. But essentially what it is is it's a subtraction meter. So the positive probe measures a voltage. The negative probe measures a voltage. It subtracts the negative from the positive to determine the potential in voltage between the two points. That's important to understand when you're doing a voltage drop test because we're doing this all on the positive side of the circuit. So it can, can be confusing if you don't understand that. So in this case, I have the positive lead hooked up to the battery stud on the fuse panel under the hood. The negative lead is back probed at the positive on the connector to the headlight. Uh, so what it's going to do is it's measuring the difference between the positive stud on the fuse panel and the positive feed at the headlight with the headlight on. I'm not disconnecting the headlight from the circuit. I'm just simply back probing it because it's easier, more accurate, and you're disturbing less things. That's really important to understand because if you have an intermittent situation or you know you have an old vehicle, you might break connectors, you might disturb it and solve the problem temporarily, wasting a bunch of time. So there's a bunch of reasons to be as careful as possible when you're doing any any testing to disturb as little as possible. That's why I do it this way. Um, you can see on the scope right now, the line is right at 12. Well, it's closer to 14 volts, really. Um, if I pull this up here, we're at 13.39, which I have a maintainer on it, and that's where it's holding it. And the reason it's at 12 volts now is because the headlight is off. So even though we're on the positive side, it has a path to ground. So it's measuring zero volts at the, the negative lead. It's measuring 12 volts at the positive lead. So the difference, be, well, it's measuring 13, not 13.4. But the difference is what it's measuring. So that's important to understand. We have 13.4 at the battery stud. We have zero volts at the headlight. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the headlight and show you what this looks like with the circuit loaded with a high resistance point on the positive side of the circuit. So now that that headlight's on, it's really dim. Uh, it's really dim because we only have uh five well i'll say six volts we only have six volts at that headlight connector or the better way to understand that is we have a six volt difference between the battery positive stud on the box to the positive lead at the headlight so we're losing the six volts that is the difference between the two we don't have six volts at the headlight. We actually have the difference. So that, that's important to understand that we're measuring the difference. We're not measuring what's actually there right now. Um, and we can do that, and you can see the voltage be less, but I'm demonstrating it this way today. So you understand you're measuring the difference between the positive post on the power distribution box to the positive lead at the headlight and we're getting six volts the reason we're getting six volts is because the we have six volts of voltage drop across the high resistance point uh, that's pretty significant but that's why the headlights dim so i hope that makes sense 
And you can see I'm going to reach out in there and disconnect the headlight. So it's just a connector. And you can watch what that does on the scope. And you can see with the headlight disconnected, we have zero volts. That's zero volts of voltage drop, which means we actually have the 13.4 volts at the headlight connector. So now I'm going to plug it back in, and you'll see that voltage drop the six volts that we had before. And you can see what that looks like. We're sitting right around six volts of voltage drop from the battery positive at the fuse box to the positive at the headlight. So what that's telling me is we're losing six volts. And uh, now I'm going to fix it and show you what it looks like when you have a good circuit. And again, you can see we have almost zero. We're going to have some voltage drop because there's current flowing through that circuit. And anytime current is flowing across a resistor, no matter how large of resistance or no matter how small of resistance, anytime current's flowing across any kind of resistance, there's going to be some measurable voltage drop. It's really important to understand this concept. I see a lot of people struggle with this. So I'm really trying to beat it to death. So right now, we have essentially the same voltage at the battery stud at the box and at the positive at the headlight. We do have a small amount of voltage drop. It uh, looks like about 280 millivolts, uh, which can be useful for some other testing I'll demonstrate in a later video. But in this case, it's important to understand the circuit integrity is good. We only have two tenths of a volt of drop or 280 millivolts. And that's an acceptable amount. The headlight's nice and bright. Problem solved. And that's how we came to that conclusion. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I, what I'm going to do to try to demonstrate you know that again is i'm going to put the put the resistor back in line so you could so you can see the difference so you can see with the resistance in line we're back to around the 6 volts of voltage drop and what that means is the available voltage at the headlight is whatever is measured at the battery stud minus the six volts. Because this, you can think of this meter as a, all volt meters as subtraction meters. All it does is it measures the two points, subtracts the negative from the positive to give you a positive total of the difference between the two spots. That's all you're doing. So you can see we have six volts of voltage drop. The headlights dim. Here we have less than half a volt of voltage drop, and the headlights nice and bright. So it's important to understand that. And you could do the same thing on the ground side by measuring the ground side of the circuit to battery ground and measuring the voltage drop that way. So it's it's this is a really important tool. This is the basic concept behind the power probe, the Devo meter, uh, many other circuit testers. But this can be done with something as simple as a basic multimeter and the loads that are already there. Uh, I've been doing this test for probably 15 years with my uh, Fluke 88. So. You don't need a, a super sophisticated lab scope to do this test. Really, all you need is a, vol a voltage meter of some sort. Uh, th this is basically the a test I use every day, all the time. Uh, I use it a lot. You can understand what is happening on the circuit and 
where the problem lies this way. Uh, so another example I want to show you is the voltage drop with no power on it and the voltage drop with current going through it. So I'm going to change the scale on this a little bit. And here you can see we're about 280 millivolts. So now I'm going to unplug the connector. And you can see why this test only works if you have a complete circuit or you have a, comp a component you're testing at the component with a circuit complete as designed. Now you could put a substitute in here. I could unplug this and put a test light across the terminals. Um, I could put a higher amperage test light or I could use something like the Devo meter to load this circuit and test it for me. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to do this test, but they're all the basic same thing. It's using the same understanding of electricity, how current works, how voltage works, and the relationship between the two. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this headlight now. And you can see with the headlight disconnected, we have a much, much lower voltage drop. We still have some because there is some resistance in the circuit. But, you know, we're talking, of, you know, now we're down to uh, 27 millivolts, which, again, is plenty acceptable and within a reasonable, you know, amount of voltage drop across uh, basically just wires and connections and whatnot. Uh, so it's 27 with no current flowing on that circuit. So now when I plug it back in, there will be current flowing on the circuit, and the higher the current flow, the higher the voltage drop across the circuit. And the reason for the voltage drop is the resistance, however small it is, across the the feed circuit there's always going to be some resistance and that resistance equals voltage drop as the current rises so does the voltage drop and you can see that here demonstrated when i plug the headlight back in the voltage drop goes up even though it's perfectly acceptable you know three tenths of a volt 280 millivolts is insignificant in my opinion especially on a on a headlamp circuit where they draw, you know, probably six to eight amps. Maybe this might be a four amp circuit. But uh, it's important to understand the relationship between the two and what that can do for you. It opens up a whole nother world of testing capabilities and testing situations that, uh, you know, I'll get into later in later videos. But this is the basic circuit test that is accomplished through many other tools, but can be accomplished with something as simple as a voltmeter or even as simple as a test light. Um, and you can use the test light across the load instead of a load and then measure the voltage drop across the headlight. If that doesn't equal near what your battery voltage is, you know you have a high resistance and then you could voltage drop the positive side of the circuit and the ground side of the circuit to determine where that voltage loss is. Uh, I've, I've tried to make this simple and straightforward. If there is any questions, you know, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'm happy to answer any questions because this basic fundamental test applies in so many situations that uh, I encourage every single person that's ever held a multimeter to really understand what you're doing here and why this works and the advantages of understanding exactly how the electricity is working in that circuit, what's going on in the circuit, how the amperage flows, how the voltage correlates to the amperage flow. You know, it can really help you make sense of a lot of things, especially once you get into scope usage and stuff like that. But even a basic multimeter, this is how most circuit faults can be found extremely easily. You know, this is a relatively quick test to set up, Super non-invasive, usually it's just a back probe. You know, you have one on the positive side of the battery, and then you back probe your feed at your component looking for voltage drop. And then uh, 
if you have a significant voltage drop, you know you have a high resistance in the circuit somewhere, and then you can track that down. So this is the absolute most basic test. Anybody doing circuit testing should understand at a fundamental level. And I hope this video accomplishes that. I hope this really helps. Uh, but if, if there's any questions or if I missed something or rushed over something, you know, feel free to leave that in the comments and I'll do my best to, uh, to fill you in on any questions you have. Uh, thanks for watching.